coming up on show 814, the Tesla Cybertruck is going to go on public display, but not for long. And where? Can you see it? Well, stick around and I'll give you the details. Plus on the podcast today, West Coast states want to build an electric highway. Also, Tesla getting closer to Texas for Cybertruck production. New cabin-facing camera activations inside Teslas. And the German government themselves taking the job of building out superchargers. Well, I guess superchargers is a Tesla word, isn't it? So let's call them high-powered chargers. That role taken on by the state to ensure that EV drivers aren't left without power. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily, the the edition for Friday, 19th of June. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story online, so you don't have to. And as always, thank you to MyEV.com. They do help me make this show. Couldn't do it without them. MyEV is the world's first marketplace, really about helping you buy and sell and learn about EVs as well. You know what? Obviously, it's in the US, so it's, uh, you know, I can't uh, I can't exactly uh, get a car shipped across the Atlantic. But I was looking at some of the Jaguar I-Pace deals. And you know what? Some of those are pretty good as well. So some secondhand uh, I-Paces that have done I mean, like five to 10,000 miles, around $50,000. That's a pretty good discount on a brand new I-Pace. I mean, there's plenty of cars on myv.com, but it is one of my faves. That and the Audi e-tron, whenever I see them, at least here in the UK, I absolutely Absolutely love those cars and check out myev.com for maybe some cars near you. Well, the West Coast is preparing for a future where giant diesel transport trucks all turn electric. Utilities and state agencies in California, uh, Oregon, Washington, all announcing plans to transform highway infrastructure to spread the transition of electric trucks, says Gizmodo. A new report today calls for electrifying the main shipping routes across the region. What they want to do is install charging stations specifically aimed at freight trucks, though. The plan is to ultimately create what is effectively an electric highway, an electric charging station, high-powered charging station, every 50 miles on Interstate 5. Now, that would run from, uh, well, it would run up the West Coast, really, uh, and it would be complete by 2025. At first... The state's job is to build 27 stations for medium-duty vehicles like delivery vans. However, by the end of the decade, by 2030, uh, they want to upgrade the stations as well so that big rig trucks have somewhere to charge. Most of the stations, of course, will be further south in California, but Oregon are going to have some in Washington as well. And it's a another way that, I guess... You know, like uh, not so much the the states, but the legislators are thinking about how they their role in moving us towards EVs, not just the job of the car makers and the truck makers to make the vehicles, but to ensure that the chargers are in the right places, even if it's you know not the taxpayers' money that is paying for them. Well, moving on, and Tesla is getting inching ever closer to Texas for the Cybertruck factory, uh, zeroing in on an area just southeast of Austin in Texas for the second factory, the second car-making factory in the US, as Elon prepares to choose a, finally choose a site to make the Cybertruck, uh, says Bloomberg today. Well, Tesla's filed an application. They actually filed the application with an Austin area school district. Uh, It's in Travis County, and the application was to seek a tax abatement according to documents. Now, these documents have to be publicly filed, so we get to find out a lot more today about what's happening. It doesn't mean that they, they've they purchased the the land. It means they have a right to purchase the land, according to Elon Musk on Twitter, announcing back in March that they had begun scouting sites for the Cybertruck and the Model Y as well, at least for Model Y customers on the East Coast. The plant, if it ends up in Texas, would be four to five million square feet, about 5,000 workers, four for vehicle assembly. Uh, You've got Fremont in California, obviously Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin, and now if it is Giga Austin or Giga Texas, whatever they want us to call it, they did purchase Fremont from Toyota in the wake of the global financial crisis, and they got that for what some say is a steal at $42 million to become their home at, uh, at, at Fremont. We're saying for a while now, actually, that Texas is pretty much nailed on to be the home of, of the Cybertruck. There's connections with Elon already, with things like SpaceX based there, but it looks like from this filing, and this filing is 50 or 60 pages long, there's tons of detail in here. The application to the school board cost $100,000, 
$150,000 payable. That's a nice check to receive. Uh, hopefully it buys a few school books wherever that money ends up going. Uh, but they had to put the, uh, the well, it's the school district, I should say, Travis County. So maybe it's not the school board. I shouldn't confuse those two things. But it uh, gives us more details on the land that uh, Tesla wants to build on, which in the minute is a gravel pit. I think it's like a, a kind of construction pit for either concrete or something. So that could come in handy if you're building a, a, a factory. Well, Tesla has activated the cabin-facing camera inside cars. Tesla rolled out a new software update yesterday, uh, which included improvements to things like, well, driving visualization for a start, the backup camera, the dash cam viewer, and even the walk-away door lock system, all updated. And some of these as well in response to customers and fans of Tesla suggesting things that they can improve. The cabin camera feature is new to their fleet and they intend to create a what they say a safer vehicle in the future by studying how collisions uh, impact humans inside the cabin says tesla arty well tesla's cabin camera which faces back at the at the cabin has been the focus of many people owners enthusiasts people who want to speculate about what they could use the camera for and it's largely remained dormant until january when elon did confirm the camera could be used to record intruders as part of sentry mode, for instance. Now it's getting more functionality with a new update that's rolling out. Seems to be happening in some parts of the US. Not everyone's getting this update, but the release notes say that you can help Tesla continue to develop safer vehicles by sharing camera data. This new update will allow you to enable the built-in cabin camera above the rear view mirror. If enabled, Tesla will automatically capture images and a short video clip just prior to a collision or safety event to help engineers develop safety features and enhancements in the future. As usual, you can adjust your data sharing preferences within the analytics section of your car camera from the cabin. The images and video clips aren't associated in any way to you. They're not linked to your VIN and your privacy is protected. You can turn that on if you want to and uh, fingers crossed. It's almost a thing that you'll turn on, but hopefully you'll never get to use because you don't want your car to be in a in a collision. But if it did happen, uh, then Tesla can use that data to improve safety. You can also now view video streams coming from the side repeater cameras. Those are the ones on the, the wings on the front of the car, filling in some blind spots for added visibility around the vehicle. When the backup camera is visible, you can swipe to display the repeater camera video feeds. You can make sentry mode videos easier to review as well. A red dot on the video scrubber to indicate the moment when a sentry mode event was triggered. Uh, when you play a sentry mode video, the dash cam viewer will skip ahead and begin playback right before the point. You also have an update to walk away door locking on your Tesla. When the vehicle is parked, well, when it's at home, so when you park your vehicle at home, uh, you can exclude your home from the walk-away door lock. And that's been something that many people have asked for if they're just walking away from their car to maybe go get, I don't know, the bucket and sponge to wash their car or they're loading and unloading before a long road trip. And you don't want to leave all your doors and, and, and windows open to stop your car locking. But you're at home. You don't want it to lock when you walk away from it. Uh, also, your vehicle will now precondition the battery when navigating to a third-party charging station, as well as superchargers. This has been something that we know has been happening in selected parts of Europe as well with third-party charging stations. And now they're rolling it out to a, a wider audience. You can find a list of nearby third-party charging stations by tapping on the lightning bolt icon at the bottom of the touchscreen. Well, moving on, and the German government is actually going to build some high-powered chargers, or at least the new National Center for Charging Infrastructure, which is a body in Germany, are inviting tenders for construction operation of a massive fleet of high-powered chargers to be built in Germany, says the website Electrive, the National Center for Charging Infrastructure, is preparing this tender uh, alongside the Federal Ministry of Transport, and the project will start in the fourth quarter of this year. At the very, very latest, they want a 1,000 sites with up to two digits, and in some cases, three-digit numbers of charge points at each site. So, as a minimum, 10, and ideally, 100. 100 DC fast charging 
charge points. That's what Germany want. The minimum power of a DC charge point should be 150 kilowatts. The sites must also be expandable because they see EVs coming quickly. And connection to the voltage grid, medium voltage grid, is a prerequisite for those wanting to submit tenders uh, to the German government for these charges to be built. So it's interesting to see uh, the lawmakers there not wanting just to leave it up to the marketplace, but they want to get actively involved to ensure that when the cars arrive, the whole chicken and egg situation, when the cars are on the road, that you've got somewhere to charge them and they want, by the look of it, some big, big DC fast charging stations. Hubs, we should call them, really, if you're going to have more than 10 and we need a new name for when there's more than 100 DC fast charging stations in one location. <laughs> wow, I'd be very envious of that. Okay, let's talk Pika Plants, Tesla's Mega Pack. Uh, there's obviously the power wall for your garage at home or wherever you want to stick it, and then there's Power Pack. And then more recently, they launched Mega Pack, uh, which switches on and off so quickly that it can really help out grid scale electricity. Tesla has now secured a massive new Mega Pack project that's being deployed rather than the planned. Pika plants, gas pika plants. These are the very expensive electricity generation plants that are very dirty in some cases, but can turn on when the grid needs them and turn off when the grid doesn't need them. But they are very expensive. And the idea, and, and like I say, polluting at times, says Electrek. The idea is that a giant battery system would charge from the grid when demand is low. And then when peak demand hits, it discharges and it helps reduce the peak of power production. It's in California. Ventura County had planned on new gas-fired Pika plants to supply power to Southern California Edison. But they've just pivoted and they've decided that Tesla's mega pack is a better solution. Uh, so they want a 100 megawatt or 400 megawatt hour battery energy storage system rather than building a new Pika plant, which, of course, is better for the environment. And in many cases, it's proving to be cheaper by the looks of it. So let's talk Cybertruck. Headline story today. This is huge. If I was anywhere near this, I would definitely do this. The Tesla Cybertruck is going to make its public debut over the weekend, starting tomorrow on Saturday, the 20th of June, at the Peterson Museum. If you want to see the Tesla Cybertruck up close and personal in the flesh slash metal, uh, you can at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, says CNET. The museum said uh, that for one week, Starting on Saturday and only only going for one week, the Cybertruck will be there. So as it reopens after the close down and uh, post-COVID, uh, a little bonus for anyone going along to the museum, Cybertruck. For Tesla fans, it's long been a destination. There is a an original first-gen Roadster, the prototype, and an original Model S there as well on the second floor. There's also like a basement thing I've heard as well that is not electric cars, but just super, super rare cars. Good for anyone that's interested in, uh, in your cars and stuff like that. But I think all of the headlines are going to be around the Cybertruck. And like I say, if I was anywhere near a couple of hours road trip of that uh, museum in Los Angeles, wouldn't it be a cool thing to go and do, to go and see what all the fuss was about? Uh, go take a selfie with the Cybertruck. Brilliant. Right, final story today, and when we look at the best-selling cars in France, it's always the Renault Zoe. It's always the Renault Zoe, but last month, it wasn't. After losing April's best-seller title for the first time in seven years, the Renault Zoe took back the lead. The French do love their Zoe. Of course, it's a domestic car for them, so they're just they're proud of the cars they make in France, and they always like to buy the Renault Zoe. And it is back on top in last month's sales figures. 486 of them were sold. And, uh, no, sorry, 486 more than the second place, which was the Peugeot E208. Well, PSA want to ramp up their production, and so maybe the Peugeot E208 could well take the fight to Renault Zoe which itself, last year, got a, just before Christmas, an update, nice bump, uh, 50, the ZE50 with the uh, 52 kilowatt hour uh, battery, which seems to be going down very, very well. Okay, question of the week time, and you can have your answers read out on Sunday. Tell me about a conversation you had with someone where you introduced them to electric vehicles, and maybe what you said, what they said, their reaction, maybe it was a test drive you gave, or uh, whether you were telling someone at work or a friend or family member about your electric vehicle. I'd like to hear your story and uh, all the details around it. Uh, if you want to email, you can. Hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on the YouTube show. 
Well, there are 231 patrons of the show. Patreon is the website that you can use to support the podcast. Got a new name to read out tomorrow. Always exciting when we welcome a new person uh, supporting the podcast. There are 813 previous shows in the archive thanks to the Patreon support, which you can use as a resource or listen back to previous shows. Uh, premium Partners are Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Brightsmith Group for Clean Tech Talent, and Porsche of the Village in Cincinnati. Also Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, and now uh, NationalCarCharging.com and their sister company in Hawaii, AlohaCharge.com. If you can leave a little review anytime on Apple Podcasts, it really helps me uh, grow the show as well. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you soon. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>